I think desire is at once the thing we think most about and also our most slippery secret. And I wanted to explore the nuance of that intersection. My name is Lisa Tadeo, and I am the author of Three Women. I spent eight years talking to these three women. I moved several times to actually live in their towns and to be a fly on the wall as much as I could be, not only on their lives, but on the community around them. And being there to see that on a daily basis was really necessary. She basically went out in the country um, and was using her nose as a reporter. and. For me, I was just sitting here in New York, and so I would kind of follow her vicariously across the country when she would send in a new address. One of the ways in which I um, was looking for subjects was to um, drive across the country six times. One of the signs I posted um, said, looking for love, singles needed for blind date study. The unrequited love one, the reason I posted that was because I think it's the most beautiful and haunting um, aspect of human nature, that we will wait for something that we may never get. These three women's stories in specific spoke to me about both the universality of desire and also their specific narratives were so unique and also universal at the same time. Lena was in the middle of, you know, leaving her husband and was had not decided to leave him yet because she was worried about money and spousal support and her children. Um, but she had just embarked upon this relationship with her high school boyfriend who she reconnected with on Facebook. And her sort of struggle was so immediate and it was happening in real time. And that was so trenchant to me and so raw. Sloan is a restaurant owner with a husband who likes to watch her have sex with other people, sometimes in front of him, sometimes not. There was a lot of stuff for her, I think, that she was holding back on. And that the more we talked, the more she sort of, the past opened up in her own brain. It was on like probably the sixth, I think, cross country trip where I was in a place called the Cowboy Cafe in Medora, North Dakota. And while I was there, I was reading the local newspaper and I read about Maggie's case. The trial was ongoing at that point. As a um, high school student alleged that she had a relationship with her high school teacher. The story definitely, it was a local paper, was, was definitely tilted in um, the teacher of the year's direction. And what was so interesting to me is that it would be tilted that way because there were just these hours and hours of phone calls past midnight. And I was, to, to me, that was just in itself. Like, I needed to know more about that. So I called her house um, and I introduced myself to her mom. And the next day I was driving to Fargo. And that's how I found Maggie. This was definitely a special experience for me as an editor because it is so rare for, for a writer to be so committed to a book that she will spend eight years to get it right. When I first talked about the book with Jofi, he wanted a big book look. I think what struck me most was how it was almost this bare bones look at these women's lives. And I wanted the, the strength of these women to come through. I thought we should definitely do an all type jacket. It's almost like you don't even need to tell a story with this jacket. You just need it to be powerful but, but vulnerable at the same time. I had a college professor who used to say um, that we read fiction to live other lives. And I would say the same thing about the best nonfiction. That's what Lisa does in this book. You're, you're living other lives um, because of the hours you know, at the kitchen table, the hours driving around in the car and asking the same question many different ways to get at what's really in somebody's heart. I think that we are all fascinated by desire. We don't talk about it. We go to work, we go to school, we take care of children, we you know, go on dates. The subliminal thing beneath everything we do is what we want. And what we want is this like raw thing that talking about feels dangerous. There's an element of 
not wanting a person but a woman specifically to get the sort of desire met um, that they want the most. I think that, you know, that's one of the, the things that I found the most interesting was why are we angry when other people get what they want? If it has nothing to do with us and our own lives, why do we have that sort of fear?